hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for today's video i'm going to go over the tput command the tput command is actually one of my favorite command to work with in linux because it gives me so many options to write my program the tput command will allow you to create or place text anywhere in the terminal give color to your text give vibrant to your program the tput command uses the term info database to make terminal dependent information available to the shell and the term info used to be called term cap the term cap or the term info is a database that holds the capability of the terminal or what can you do with the terminal so if i go over to my terminal and i type in echo dollar sign term then we see that our terminal type or the name of our terminal is xterm and that suggests that our terminal behaves like the classic x terminal emulator program tput colors shows that we have 256 colors available for us to use when using the tput command so to see some of the colors i'm going to do a loop so for i in and I want to use the first 10 colors. So I'm going to say from one to from one to 10. Actually, I'm going to close up this space right here to make it more readable. And I'm going to say do and t put set a f. Set a f will set the foreground colors for us. So set a f will only show the colors for the text itself and not the background. If you want to make your background a different color, you can use set a B. So I'm going to print out all of the colors and I want to print the famous hello world. And I want this to print about 10 times. And then I'm going to end up with my done statement. When I hit enter, you see the different colors that you can get or the different colors you can make your text when using the tput command so you can address the colors by their numbers so you can see tput set af number five and that will give you pink or tput set af number nine and that would give you like that reddish color now on the terminal you have different columns and lines on the terminal so the columns go across and the lines come down so if you want to know exactly how many columns that you have on your current terminal right now you can use tput calls and it tells us we have four 114 columns in our current terminal if you want to see the lines you can see tput lines and we have 35 lines in our current program now the best way to use tput is to use tput in a script so i'm going to go ahead and clear my screen and i'm going to create a file called tput.sh so when i use the vi command the vi would automatically create that file for me so i'm going to hit enter and we get an empty file so the first thing that i'm going to do which i always does in my bash script i'm going to put in the shebang so first i'm going to press i for insert mode and then i'm going to do exclamation pound slash bin slash bash so now i have my shebang i can go ahead and write some of my logic now tput have this option called blink and most people, when they're trying to get the user attention, they probably want to blink some text. So if you want to blink your text, you can use the tput blink option. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable called blink and I'm going to assign it to tput blink. So I'm going to say blink equals to dollar sign tput. And I want to use the blink option. I also want to reset the text from blinking. So I'm going to say T put SGR zero. SGR zero will reset the text so it will not blink. If you do not reset it, once you run your script or on your program, all of the text is going to be blinking and you don't want that. You only want a specific or a particular text to be blinking in your program. So for this program, I'm going to create something really short. So I'm going to just print, um, enter your name and take in the name from the user. And then I'm going to print back the name to the user on the terminal. So to do that, I'm going to use the print F 
statement instead of the echo statement. So I'm going to say printf and percentage s and for this statement I want to use my blink variable that I declared right here. So I'm going to say blink and I want to enter the text enter your name and then for that I want to reset after the user has entered a name. So I'm going to call my reset variable. So now we're going to take in the user's name. So we're going to say read name and then we're going to echo back out the name that the user had entered. So I'm going to say hi and I want dollar sign name. Escape colon WQ to save and quit. Before I run the program, I have to give it permission. So I'm going to say chmod 755 and I want tput dot sh and everything works good. So now I'm going to say bash tput dot sh, hit enter. And you see that the text now on the screen, enter your name, is blinking. So I'm going to say Nikki. When I put in the results Nikki, it does not blink. And that's what the T put SGR0 does. It reset the text from blinking. So I'm going to hit enter and it says hi Nikki. Now that's just a basic way of doing T put. You can do a lot more with Put. For example, if I go back to the VI program, I can do a little bit more than just writing enter your name. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to remove this code. I'm going to write a next set of code. This time I'm going to use the tput cup command. The tput cup command gives us a lot of advantage as to what we can do with our text. So tput 15, it will move the characters 15 lines down or 15 rows down. Uh, some people say 40 columns across, but I most likely see it as 40 characters across. Then we can echo something like probably welcome to my program. I'm going to just write something simple like that. So I'm going to save and quit and then I'm going to go back into bash and run this again. And now you see welcome to my program went 16 lines down from the regular lines and 40 characters across. When I run the program, if you look at on top, you can see that we still have the previous command showing. So I can go back inside of VI. And if I want to clear the program, I can simply just use the clear command, which will clear everything on the screen for me. But the clear command wouldn't really reset or clear the T put options. So in order for you to reset or clear the T put option, use the command T put clear. And that will clear everything on the screen for you and give your program a nice clean screen or a nice clean look. So I'm going to go ahead and say escape colon WQ to save and quit. And now when I run this again, everything, even the code from above is going to clear completely and show my program. So I'm going to hit enter and you see my program now looks clean. Now you can do a lot more, as I said, with the tput command. For example, if I want to make the welcome to my program a different color, I can go ahead and say tput set, which will be the background color. So set background color and maybe we want to set it to four. I think four is blue and we can say tput set uh, foreground color nine and I think nine was red if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to save and quit and I'm going to run the program again and you see we have the background blue and our text red. Now what I like to do here as well when you finish I always reset the colors. 
because sometimes if you create certain programs and you don't reset the colors, when you run the program, the results will also be the same red and blue or the same color that you gave it in the teapot option. So the best way or the best practice is after the statement, you want to reset. So I'm going to say teapot and I want to reset the text. So I'm going to say SGR zero and that should reset everything for me. But before that, I supposed to put a semicolon. Now, one of the most useful ways of using teapot, for example, if I want the user to enter some type of password to get into the system. So what I'm going to do above, I'm going to declare a variable called passwords. I'm going to say password, and I'm going to have my password equals to one, two PWD. So under the welcome statement, I want to add enter password, All right? So I'm going to say to echo enter password. So we're going to give a variable USR PWD, and we're going to give a logic after that. So the logic would be if dollar sign USR PWD. So if it's equals to dollar sign password, which is the password that I declared right here. So if it's equals to that, then we're going to use the C matrix animation. Else we just want to echo, maybe sorry, wrong password. And then the famous fee, save and quit. And I'm going to run the command again. It's okay program. We can still do a little bit better with um, placing the text in the proper way. So we can put the enter password just on the same line with the welcome to my program statement. And probably we want the user to enter the password. So have that blinking thing on the same line with enter password. So let's break the program and go back into VI. And for that, what we're going to do for the enter password, we're going to add a tput statement. So we're going to say tput cup. This time we want it to be on, uh, let's put line 17 and we want it 40 characters across as well. And for the user to input the password, we can put it on the same line as well as the enter password statement. And we want it on line 17 as well, but instead of 40 characters across, we'll probably give it about 54 or 55 characters across. Uh, let's go ahead and save and quit. And let's run the script again. So you see when I enter my password now, you cannot see anything that is going on. You cannot see the password. Now let's break the, the program and we're going to go back into VI and where we use read dash S tput has the in this command. So you can say tput in this and that will make the password invisible for you. So if I come down here and I say tput in this, which is a better option to use for teapot. And we can just remove the dash S so that either you can either use the dash S or you can use teapot in this. So if I go back again and I hit escape colon WQ to save and quit and I run the statement, you would see the same thing. I'm going to enter the password. So you see it moves while I'm entering the password. That's the difference with the in this and the read dash S. So you see the in this, it moves the cursor while I'm entering the password. If I break the program and I go back into VI and instead of using the in this option, so I'm going to remove it. And instead I'm going to use the dash S option. I'm going to save this time and I'm going to run the program again. You see now when I'm entering the password, the cursor is not moving with the characters. First, I'm going to enter the wrong password. So I'm going to say one, two, three, P W D and I should get sorry, wrong password. Now I'm going to go back and run the script again, and I'm going to enter the correct password this time. So I'm going to say one, two P W D 
and now I have my little matrix animation that came up. So that's all for this video. Hope you learned something from this video. If you have, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.